Twitch, and I'm saying check it out. So, the story of Christian Cruz. Now, if you guys don't know, there's four cooperating people in 6 Nines like case, okay, in the whole Rico case. And these cooperating witnesses, one six nine, second is the driver, the other is this guy who's a older, he was a five-star ranking member in Nine Trey, okay, which he was a dealer, like he was a supplier for the rest of the gang, so he was on the drug end of stuff. And there's this chick who happened to be the girlfriend of one of the kidnappers. Now, they're probably more cooperating people, a lot more. But in this case, none of those people were necessarily necessary, if that makes sense. Just because what they're trying to get these guys locked up for, they didn't have to include other people. So, even though it's four people that's taking the stand, cooperating, it's probably dozens of snitches. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Anyway. Let's get into this guy called Christian Cruz, because he's a little bit different than, say, the driver. You know, you can say about the driver, well, the driver, you know, he signed up for a job, like, yo, how the hell he get mixed up in all of this? Of course he won't tell, right? Six so nine, you can be like, he ain't built for this, blah, blah, blah. But then you look at this one particular person, of course, you can say that with a girlfriend. Listen, what did a girlfriend got to do with shot and crime? Now, this guy, Christian Cruz, he is the key to the government's whole case about nine tray dealing drugs. Now, I got to tell y'all because it's so long. He testified for two days just like 6 9 Let me just simplify it. This nigga must be watching TJX6 because this nigga must have been ordering his drugs off the fucking dark web on a VPN. Not well, well, without a VPN, clearly, because he got caught. But if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, let me just break it down. Again, I'm not going to read verbatim because it's going to take a 20-minute video to understand something I want you to understand quickly. This guy was ordering drugs on the line from China. And the drugs was coming to his fucking crib in Brooklyn, or actually the Bronx, and it was coming to fucking DHL. Nigga might as well pick UPS or FedEx. God damn it, okay? Now, imagine the plug to an entire street gang ordering their fucking drugs online. What were they ordering online? Heroin? Coke? Fentanyl? Basically, would order all this shit. It comes from China. They would break it down, mix it up, stretch it, do all the stuff that people do to drugs, give it out to everybody else in the gang, and those people would get the drugs on consignment, which means, yo, you're getting it. You got to bring certain money back, and that's how they were making money. Now, this guy was a finesser. He was lying to everybody in the gang. He was telling people, yo, I make $3 million, okay? Or, or that, well, well, actually, he said that in court, too. He said he made around $3 million, but he said to get the position that everybody trusted him as a connect, he had to lie. And some of the lies he told is that he won the lottery to get $1,000 every week for the rest of his life. So he made, the dr- he made the other people in the gang feel like he was the guy who has a lot of money, and if you want to get a lot of money, you got to follow him. So he was telling crazy amount of lies. Now, it goes further, and it gets even deeper. And by the way, that's where you see some of the jealousy and some of the beef and stuff like that, and that's where you start to see people trying to raise in the hierarchy. By the way, after one of the guys who was selling drugs for him got booked, he convinced, like, I believe it was Melmer or somebody else to like, yo, yo, let me get a promotion again because he went from being nothing to a five-star general. He wanted to be upgraded in hierarchy just because he's, he's, he's giving people drugs. By the way, we haven't heard about him doing any shootings or anything like that. He talks about other people doing shootings, but he looked like he wasn't doing any violence. He was only, like, getting the drugs, giving it to the homies. Now... Let me tell you how crazy this guy actually got with it. Or not crazy, but like how much of a con man this guy was. This guy had his girlfriend, his girlfriend, who was a NYPD sergeant, New York Police Department sergeant. That's a high-ranking police officer. He had her drop off his drugs to other drug dealers. Basically, the nigga had the cops working for him. Now, granted, he was fucking that said cop. But still, you got to be a good talker. You got to be a good liar. You got to be someone who kind of got something about him to convince people who, by the way, are working in law enforcement, who know they shouldn't even be dating somebody like you, know they shouldn't be definitely not touching drugs from somebody like you. They're dropping off your drugs. You then, basically, by putting in no work, at least in the streets in terms of some violence, you raise up in the gang just because you let them know if y'all want money, 
Y'all going to get money through this drug shit, and I got it. So this guy is a expert finesser. Now, interestingly enough, the police officer, which was his girlfriend, got locked up the same day as 6 9 and them, too. But the NYPD didn't loud it up because, of course, they're not going to, like, fucking announce that one of their cops got um, arrested for, number one, corruption, but also, like, dealing drugs. So they didn't really make an announcement about that, and apparently that chick has not even seen court and is somewhere out on bail or something like that. However, it's interesting to see the other people who are helping to sink the ship. If you ask me, on the violence tip, it was inner beef that was causing violence. Apparently, Mel Murder was beefing with Nuke. They were shooting at each other, like, way back, almost like 10 years ago. And then you update to, like, over the years, you had, of course, Shoddy beefing with Harv and Shoddy going at it with some other people and also Shoddy doing things in the streets just for the gang in general. That's how my last video came about, five people in one night. But then you get to, okay, 6 9 is the new moneymaker. We don't got to sell drugs no more to make money. So now it's then people who are saying, yo, we got to get close to 6 9 So you can imagine where the beef is coming from, right? The beef with a lot of the street dudes, they didn't really trust Shoddy to give Shoddy drugs to deal. They wanted Shoddy just to be the shooter. So when they didn't trust you with the package and you were just the shooter, when a rapper comes around, yeah, I get that you serve a purpose of being the shooter, but you've never been the person who deals with the money. So now when 6 9 is giving the shooter, a.k.a. Shoddy, the money to give everybody else, people start feeling a certain type, wait, 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 why are we giving him the money? He ain't never known to handle the money when we're just selling drugs. And that's what I'm saying in terms of how this whole Rico case is coming along. By the way, this guy was cooperating, this Christian Cruz guy was cooperating May 2018. Months before 6 9 of them got locked up. By the way, he was trying to set up some of the guys in 9 Trey. The guy, Ro, um, a.k.a. Roland Martin, he was trying to set that guy up by trying to get him to you, string him along to buy like a kilo of coke, but he was outpricing it, which essentially was just gaining evidence for the cops to see that, yo, this high-ranking member of 9 Trey is buying drugs or trying to deal it. That's a big-ass charge. So again, this guy was sent people up when he was caught and he started cooperating, right? So he sent people up. He's also, he had his girlfriend who was an NYPD sergeant distributing his drugs. He was buying his drugs offline, okay, right? And then he also finessed his way through the ranks of the whole nine trade like hierarchy system by just letting everybody know like, yo, I'm the guy with the plug. You need the guy with the plug to make money. If y'all want to make the money that I'm making, y'all going to have to respect me, give me some rank, all of that. Now, when this guy was asked, interestingly enough, they said, bro, because they ask everybody this when they're on the stand, right? When you're cooperating, when they say, ask you this, right? Why are you cooperating? He simply and flat out says it. I'm cooperating to save my own ass. And again, I keep bringing up this whole street loyalty thing. Because most of the dudes that are in gangs, they're scummy, they're slimy, they're calling each other roaches. Like, they're not the guys who are like, yo, all for one, one for all. It's like, yo, all for me and I'm just for me. <laughs> so you see this guy who finessed his way through the ranks and did everything. He basically admits on the stand, I'm only telling because I'm facing 50 in a life and I want the same thing that 6 9 is getting where I could get out in a couple months. Ain't that a bitch? The guy who gets the drugs from overseas gives the drugs to a whole street gang, right? And by the way, he didn't... Listen, they have the evidence of the fucking DHL letter, the envelope. The envelope that he fucking was ordering drugs from online. The, but the think about it. 6 9 is probably going to get off with a light sentence. He was ordering for niggas to get killed or shot at. The nigga who was buying the drugs offline and giving it to the street gang, and the street gang was shooting it out over the shit and doing whatever to make sure the drugs got sold, those people are going to get more years than the guy who gave him the drugs in the first place. The plug. It's a, it, this whole situation is a microcosm of how crime is in the United States. The people on the streets doing the dirty work, you always get the short end of the stick. It don't matter who gave you the gun. Don't matter who was the fucking drug trafficker, the, the, the gunner drug trafficker, who's the really bigger fish. A lot of times the bigger fish 
they kind of value life a little bit more. They actually flip on the lower guys. And now it seems like these days when it comes to law enforcement, they're down to say, okay, as long as you're not like El Chapo or like, you know, Pablo Escobar. Yeah, if you're high up on a totem pole, as long as you snitch on everybody else below you and you tell us exactly what they did and you basically put them in a situation where they're fucked, we'll give you a lighter sentence. And this is what it is. Again, and I'm not, not to sound like a, a broken record, 6 9 ordered shootings and the guys who are about to carry the shootings out are going to serve more years than him. Think about that. This guy ordered drugs offline, gave it to an entire street gang, and basically they were doing, they were selling drugs and shooting in this and third over whatever drug territory or whatever. And essentially, this guy is telling on all of them, and he's going to spend less time in jail than them. This guy gave shot in them drugs. And then basically, he doesn't want to possibly do 15 a life. He doesn't want to do 15. Shotty already took 15. We'll see, man. Anyway, um, I hope all of this makes y'all realize that joining gangs is a futile thing. Futile motherfucking thing. And to keep it real, it's pretty retarded. Anyway, it's your boy, Jackie Demons. Make sure you guys like them, subscribe. I know this doesn't directly have to do with like 6 9 and everything, but this is what the Rico case really was about at first. Because you can imagine they were probably on to game like with this guy buying drugs online for years. But it probably took until now for them to like bring everybody in, probably because of the violence. So really, they were investigating these niggas from like six years ago for for drugs. And now they arrested people. And I'm guessing it's because the violence was getting out of hand. Shooting Times Square, y'all tripping. Everybody get locked up. What y'all think? Make it in the comments. What you guys like? Definitely subscribe. If y'all like videos like this, let me know in the comment section. I'll give y'all more in-depth breakdowns. It's interesting, but it's sad at the same damn time. It's more academics. Boop.